It's an exciting time because a new gear has arrived and I am comparing two cameras today. One is Canon M5 and the other one is closely named Canon M50. Just to give you a little bit of background, M5 was released earlier than M50 and I had been using this one and now I am deciding to jump onto this one instead as my main driver. So I just wanted to kind of compare these two in depth and kind of tell you guys about my reason behind the jump and what I like about each of these. There's a lot of videos out there covering these two and reviewing in depth already so I won't really go into really deep review of each of these but I'll be comparing them. They are similarly priced however M50 is later released so it contains a little bit more feature in my opinion however it is missing some things that was in M5 so I'm just gonna try and cover those things. So first of all the biggest difference is the screen so on the back of these cameras you'll see that you'll have LCD screens and because they are both mirrorless uh, the screens very very important so the biggest drawback of M5 was that if you're trying to shoot yourself that you're gonna have to flip the screen like so and then you're gonna be viewing it like this it's gonna get blocked by tripod so if I bring a tripod out it's gonna be blocking it completely and because I have worked with this camera for several years now I have made Made a couple of rigs to address this issue first one was that when I'm shooting in studio I have something like this so that I can just pop it in here and then just lock in place I can just lower the screen and everything is accessible. There's no issue with accessing the battery or SD card. Easy to mount. I can look at the screen and then if I need to go somewhere else I can just quickly undo the screw and I can be on my way out. So that's been good on studio. However, if I'm on the go, mount the tripod, essentially now I have blocked my screen. So if I just turn it on, you can see how everything is completely blocked. So I can't really see the screen or do any setting adjustments. So that's really been a drag. So I have made a little rig for handheld tripod which is this one right here. So I have sort of rubbery material on top of the metal that I have cut and I have just quarter inch threads in here with little knob that you connect into the camera. So what I can do is just use this mount onto the camera like so. And once that is tightened, I can just mount the tripod anywhere of these three holes. Make sure that is secure and then I can just turn on the camera and then you can see the screen. Now the drawback of this is that even if I use a tripod that is fairly secure, it is still a bit lopsided. So there's always that risk of it topping over and it adds a sort of bulk as well because if I'm mounting a microphone on top, that just adds a bulk of this much of space inside of your bag. And to carry it around like this, it's still a lot of torque that is happening. So that's what I have been using so far it kind of worked so I really just wanted to move away from doing this continuously so there is M50 now when it comes to M50 you can see that this is a clear back you can just open it up like so and just turn on the camera and you will be able to start shooting let me just get rid of the lens cap and then I can just turn it around and I can start shooting right away so it's really easy to just look at myself even if I have a tripod underneath or a microphone on top it's easier to balance let me just do that and then I can just quickly pop this on and then just tighten it securely and then I am pretty much good to shoot so I can just look at myself, even if there's a microphone, there's not much of an added bulk at all. And if I need to stow it away, I can just fold that down and just put it in a bag. So it's a lot easier to use. Only the drawback that I have is the microphone jack is actually positioned on the side. I'm gonna have to remember to flip this around whenever I have microphone jack because it will be covering up here and I won't be able to turn it all the way around. I just have to fold it a little bit and then turn it around and then stow it away and in m5 actually if i was just trying to shoot down low here then i can just 
flip the screen up and just be able to stare at it. However, I couldn't really do that with M50. I had to actually flip the screen out, turn it around, and even then, it's not exactly parallel. And another, I guess, bigger drawback is when you have it flipped like so, I have to remember to stare at the lens and often I'm just trying to check myself in focus and I'll notice myself just staring at the side screen and you'll notice that I'm kind of drifting away looking at the side screen here so I just have to keep reminding myself to just look at the lens instead of the side screen. Uh, in the M5 I can still look at the screen as long as I can see it. Even if I'm staring at the screen I can still look like I'm staring at the lens because it's right below. Your eyes are more giveaway if you're looking aside. If I'm looking down below it's harder to tell whether I am actually looking at the lens or the screen. So the subject has to remember to just talk on the lens rather than looking on the side. So the screen has been my biggest reason why I have decided to move from M5 to M50. However, there's another function that I found really useful and until I have figured this one out, I really wasn't ready to pull the trigger because moving away from this one and this one, there was gonna be some price even if I end up selling this one. So I have done a fair amount of researches uh, before jumping onto this. Now, the function that I'm talking about is actually EOS utility, basically a computer application that you install inside of your computer Computer to connect to your camera. I have owned a Rebel or 100D which is sort of the entry-level DSLR that Canon makes. Now that one actually had this EOS utility connection so I can just connect my camera to the computer and I can adjust all the settings inside of the camera and basically shoot uh, whilst I'm having a live view inside of the camera and it's very accurate. But I guess for some odd reason Canon decided to take that function out of M5. So whilst it can kind of connect and transfer images, it just completely took out ability to connect and actually be able to see the live view and change the settings whilst you're looking at what the camera is seeing. And this being more recent iteration of camera, this is built as higher grade targeting more pro slash enthusiast people. It just didn't really make sense. And it was quite a big letdown because I really wanted that functionality for being able to control my camera from my computer rather than then just going back and forth between the camera and trying to make sure the settings right. So when I tried the M50, I have confirmed that EOS utility indeed works and it's great. However, the app inside of the smartphone, which is Canon Connect, uh, works perfectly fine for either of the models. You can shoot remotely via Bluetooth or you can connect via Wi-Fi and have a bit more functionality. I have been told that using the same application, I can actually change a lot more fun functions inside of M50 than M5 because it's somehow later iteration. I'm yet to confirm that just wireless connectivity uh, works flawlessly for both of the cameras. It's just that when I'm just connecting via USB to a computer, US utility does not work for M5. There's a lot of people struggling with that and M50 works flawlessly. So the next point is about the buttons and dials. So overall shape of the camera is quite similar, similar size. I guess M5 is slightly heavier and you can kind of see that it is grayer in color whereas M50 is completely black. There is definitely a color difference but also a fair amount of button difference especially on the top. On the back and the front it looks almost identical but on the top you can see the button count difference. So on the back of it also shows a different button layout as well. You'll see that there is a dial here that just turns around, which is very nice. And also the video recording button right here. Whenever I'm trying to look at the camera and trying to hit the record button, so instead of hitting the record button, which is behind the back, I've actually assigned multifunction button as a recording so I can just hit that button. Whereas in M50, it is positioned on the front so it is a lot easier to hit. And I can even assign that the shutter button as a 
recording button so I have been doing that as well I believe you can do the same on here however it's just a gesture from Canon that this is really meant for vlogging or someone who's trying to record by just looking at the front of the camera instead of the back so there is that button missing on this position instead it's like the release of the screen and there's no dial there so in terms of the dial um, it is missing fair amount compared to M5 so if you look at the camera itself you'll notice there is a function dial here and then there is multi-function dial here and then exposure one down here and the one that is mainly used around the shutter whereas in M50 if you look there's no mode dial here and then the mode dial has been moved back here and there's only the dial that is around the shutter instead and there's no dial around the back button here so I am definitely missing out a lot of dials here it's not a huge problem for me because I don't find myself using the dial all that much especially this one I never get to use um, this one I often use it for ISO and it's just easier to access this and the exposure dial as well but it is something that I'm willing to give out for a screen basically one thing I did notice however which was kind of disappointing is that if you actually turn the dial around the shutter it is fairly satisfying clicks and it feels very solid and other dials as well it is very satisfying clicks much finer control is possible whereas it kind of feels like mushy on M50 just because it looks exactly the same it should be the same function however it was feeling really mushy so I thought it was a defect of the camera I don't know if it's just some oversight one good reason I can think of for the reason why they would have made this way is because if you're recording videos you don't want to click in noise you just kind of want it to be a bit more subtle so maybe that's the reason why I don't know maybe it was cheaper to make it this way but I do kind of miss M5's sort of clicky button dial and this feels a lot more solid than M50 overall. You will notice that on M5 you have the power button on the left so in order to turn the camera on and off I would have to use my left hand so I can't really operate that by one hand I have to always reach out and also to change the mode dial I cannot really change it with one hand I have to get another hand to press this button down and then turn it which was kind of annoying at times especially when I'm shy of hands whereas on M50 and the power button is positioned here so I'm able to turn it on with one hand and change the mode with one hand which is a lot nicer than having to reach out and grab with another hand as well. Altogether, it feels like M5 is more solid. It has a lot more physical dials, which you can quickly change things. However, you need both hands. So people who's doing more photography base or who's doing sort of film work professionally, I think it will be a lot more suitable than M50 where it is lacking the dials to change on the go, whereas you can quickly change with one hand instead of two. So um, I think those are pretty apparent throughout the physical button slash dial differences. So all in all, I think both of these cameras are just fantastic, nitty gritty stuff that I complain about, but um, I have loved my M5 and I'm almost a bit too sad to let this one go, but I'll need some cash on my hands for making a purchase for M50. So I will be listing this for eBay so I can get small return of cash. And the biggest reason for this switch was the screen and it's gonna be really compact whenever I decide to travel around with this kit because it no longer has a little leg that just sticks out from the side and this July I'll be traveling to Seattle for built presentation just in case you guys are interested in the built conference uh, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out so I'll be presenting at the events as well as doing a little bit of video coverage as my travel series so stay tuned for those stuff and all of my accessories that I used to use for my M5 I'll probably 
unlisted onto uh, eBay altogether, but I actually don't really know what I'm gonna do with this little rig that I have made. Do you think any of you might be interested in this sort of thing? Um, I actually have made a few extra as well. So I have this one here, which is pretty much the same thing, whereas this one's steel and this is aluminum. Aluminum? Aluminum? Anyways, um, I have this one here, so I don't know what to do with this yet. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments, perhaps. So if you really like this sort of gear review slash comparison video about my own setup and the reasoning, if you actually found it useful, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching these type of contents and leave a comment if you have any questions. And I'll see you next time. Bye.